Welcome everyone to 90.5 on the FM dial, KNLC. We are here in our first ever radio, <laughs> radio ministry. <laughs> so uh, for those of you who just got here, let's get some practice. Uh, you're going to be using your car horn a lot tonight, or you can open up your sunroof if you want. Stick your hands up in the air. Let us know that you love Jesus. So uh, why don't we honk if you love Jesus? There we go. Amen. And man, some of your car horns really sound crazy. <laughs> honk if you love the Lakers. Okay, this time. Have some clippers. All right, I didn't think so. Who wants to honk like that? All right, we're, uh, we're going to get started in just a, a couple minutes here. We're waiting for people to fill the wall. But in any case, we'll get going. We get going? All right. We're going to get started. I want to introduce to you, for the first time ever on this stage, this outdoor stage, Pastor Mike Solonitis. Give him a big <laughs> the broadcast only goes 300 feet, so just roll that out there. Some of you are really excited about it. I've had some moments recently where I'm like, how are we going to do this? How's this going to work out? We have limited space, but we're doing what we can with what we have, and so we're excited, and hopefully this is the beginning of something uh, new for us, maybe not just in the cars, maybe just in the parking lot, in the plaza. Um, but yeah, thank you guys all for being patient with us. It's glad, it's great to see you all again. I haven't seen some of you since like February or March. Hey, hi, Karen. Um, and Don and kids. Uh, and I realized too that uh, it's really hard to recognize who people are with their masks. And like I forget what faces are. It's really weird. Anyway, um, we're just going to spend some time worshiping and we'll have some prayer break in between. But I wanted to share a scripture with you from Psalm 34. It says, I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. I will glory in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt the name together. And tomorrow morning, you're going to hear me talk about uh, how a lot of things, there's a lot of things we can't do, but there are a lot of things that we can do. And I want to be the kind of person who focuses more on what we can do. And worship is not over. And you can worship God wherever you are. You're going to do it in your car right now, right? And so we can give God glory in the good and bad. Whatever is happening, we still have the opportunity to praise Jesus. And so I just want to encourage you. Let's see, hands sticking out of the window. I don't know, whatever it is, but just worship Jesus tonight. And, and just have fun, right? We haven't been together in a very long time. Even though we're in our car. Hi, Charlotte. <laughs> um, I'm excited to be here, and I hope you are too. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much uh, that we have the opportunity to come together in this way and worship you. Father, I pray that you would be with us in this place. God, where two or three are gathered, we all know the scripture, you are in the midst. Father, meet us in our cars, meet us on the plaza, meet us in this parking lot. Um, pray that we would hear from you tonight. Maybe in a way that some of us have been desperate to hear from a long time. But above all else, we pray that you would be glorified, that your name would be lifted up, and that we praise you too. But we thank you for what you are going to do tonight. We praise you in Jesus' name. Let me just say one more thing. If you have a prayer request, this is weird. If you have a prayer request, um, or you... Feel like the Lord has given you a word, text me, text Pastor Ken, uh, text my wife, text Pastor Ken Santos, or just wave at us, get one of our attention, and uh, we would love to pray with you however we can, or or if you have a public word, we would like to share that from the microphone, but uh, just like on Sunday, we're all in this together, okay? We love you guys.
it is here, yes, let there be freedom. You guys are awesome, I miss you all. All right, God is here. His name forever reigns. Do you agree with me, church? Yes.
Praise God. Praise God. I don't know about you, but up here, <laughs> it really doesn't matter where you are. God's presence is uh, can be felt anywhere. Isn't that right? And uh, we're feeling it up here. We hope you're feeling it in your vehicle. The Lord is here. You know what feels really good? It feels like Easter morning, where we used to do sunrise services right up here on this plaza. And it was just the best feeling ever to be shouting to the neighborhood that Christ is risen. <laughs> and I kind of feel like we get to do that tonight. Because uh, we don't have to wait till Easter to declare that we serve the risen Christ. How many of you know Christ is risen? Off your heart if Christ is risen. <laughs> yeah. And, and listen, uh, we can get excited about that every single day. So what we're going to do at this time is we're going we're gonna to enter in, into a time of, uh, of prayer and agreement. And uh, before we do, I want to just share a, a, uh, a word that God gave, I believe, to, uh, to our team at the beginning of 2020, uh, not even knowing that all of this craziness was going to be happening. And the word came out of uh, Zechariah 9, verse 12. The Lord gave me this like in December or November of 2019, and I held on to it, sensing it was a word for all of 2020. And I shared it with our staff, our team, at one of our leadership retreats at the beginning of the year. And uh, I was reviewing it tonight, and everything seems to kind of just make sense. So I want to share this with you. If you have your Bibles, turn them on to Zechariah chapter 9, verse 12. It says this, and this is the Lord speaking through the prophet Zechariah to his people who have just, um, they've been in exile in Babylon for like 70 years and they're just starting to return to the city of Jerusalem, to their home, to their homeland. I'm going to take this mask off. Um, and so as, as they're returning, they're starting to question, um, what, you know, what's it going to be like when we get back home? Uh, you know, are we, is the city going to be uh, even um, remotely similar to what it was when we left? And how are we going to even rebuild things when we get back to Jerusalem? And so the prophet gives a, a word of encouragement. And check this out, because they know when they left Jerusalem 70 years prior, that city was destroyed. Their temple was destroyed, their land was taken. Uh, their lives as they knew it were literally taken from them. And that, that, that has a familiar ring to it in a time like this, doesn't it? So the, the prophet speaks these words, the Lord speaks these words to the prophet. He says, return to the stronghold, you prisoners of hope, even today, I declare that I will restore double to you. Now, check this out. There's three things here. First, he says return. And at the beginning of the year, I asked our staff, I asked our team, I said, uh, what is it in 2020 that the Lord is asking us to return to? He says here, return to the stronghold. Another translation says, return to the place of safety. All throughout the book of Psalms, the stronghold, uh, the presence of the Lord is what is referred to when it talks about strongholds. The name of the Lord is a strong tower, a stronghold. And so we, we could see this, uh, this idea of the stronghold as representing the presence of God. Return to his presence and so i want to say to all of you tonight and encourage you there's something that in this crazy time in this covid 19 pandemic that the lord has been calling us to return to and it's the i believe one of the things he's calling us to return to is the place of personal and family worship so you know we we don't grow dependent on what the church does or what pastors do but we learn 
learned that we can worship and build our own family altar right in the place where we live. And so there's a call to return to the family altar, to the personal altar, that place of worship and devotion to the Lord that honestly no one but you and your family see. It's simple, unadulterated, pure devotion to Jesus. And God is saying, return to that. All right. And then secondly, he says, return to the place of safety. I, I interpret that as return to um, the healthy rhythms that help you flourish as a human being. Honestly, like how many of you have, because of all the time you've got on your hands now, you're starting to think, man, I need to take better care of myself. Or I need to sleep better. I need to eat better. I need to get some exercise. You know, this almost forced Sabbath that has come upon us is a is an invitation to return to healthy rhythms of rest and work so what is it maybe you can share with somebody in the vehicle that you're in right now what might God be asking you to return to in this time or what have you found yourself returning to that is something God glorifying and healthy um, if you if you can go ahead and, and take a moment and just share that with somebody in the vehicle secondly there's this uh, what I call redefinition he says return to the stronghold you prisoners of hope these folks that he's speaking to were actually prisoners in Babylon exiled in Babylon they felt like prisoners for 70 years and many of us can relate to that feeling right now don't we? can't we because uh, of all the restrictions and limitations that have been placed on us it feels like you're a prisoner in your own home sometimes and, and so but he says here you're not a prisoner of Babylon he says you're a prisoner of hope he's redefining what you're in prison to and so I think what we need to ask ourselves here is what might God be asking us to see or to do differently in this season? You might feel like you're imprisoned. The Apostle Paul was imprisoned in many different places. But he would, he would tell you, you'd be the first to say, the gospel that I'm preaching is not chained. And so listen. You might feel like you're a prisoner in many different ways today, but you are not a prisoner to COVID-19. Come on, honk your horn if you can say, yeah, you're not a prisoner to some pandemic. Oh, yeah, I like it. I like it. <laughs> we accept the reality of all the trouble that's in our world, but you're not in prison to it because you are a follower of Jesus. And as, as followers of Christ, we're not imprisoned to pandemics. We're not imprisoned to political interests. Come on. We're not imprisoned to systemic evil. We are prisoners of the hope of the gospel. We're imprisoned. We're prisoners for Christ and for his sake. And listen, we're prisoners of hope. In other words, you can't help but be hopeful. No matter how bad it looks, no matter how bad it gets, and I know it's gotten bad, right? How many of you have lost a loved one? How many of you have lost a friend? How many of you have been grieving lately? I mean, there's a lot of us, including myself. But I have to remind myself, I'm not a prisoner to my grief. I'm a prisoner of the hope of the gospel i'm a prisoner to that so i can't help but be hopeful because christ is risen and he is going to come someday and create a new heaven and bring a new heaven and a new earth out of all of this and we get to be a part of it in fact it's happening right now even though you may not feel like it so you're a prisoner of hope tell the person in your vehicle you're a prisoner of hope yeah so be hopeful be hopeful and then watch this this is the passage i want to end with 2 Corinthians 7, but we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. Watch this. We're hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed. We're perplexed. Anyone confused lately? Oh man, all you gotta do is turn on the social media feed and everything is confusing, folks. But he says, we're perplexed, we're confused, but not in despair that means you're hopeful 
We're persecuted, but not abandoned. We're struck down, but not destroyed. Verse 16, therefore, do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, but inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. Like there's something that's happening on the inside of us that is good. If you'll let God work on the inside of you during this time when everything on the outside seems to be out of control. God's doing a deep work in all of us. It's achieving for us an eternal glory that outweighs everything we can see on the outside. Watch. So verse 18, it says, So therefore we fix our eyes not on what is seen. So turn off your social media feed from time to time. Please, would you stop listening to, to all the news that the algorithm is putting out for you and thinking that everyone in the world agrees with you? Turn it off from time to time and fix your eyes not on what is seen, but what is un uh, but on what is unseen, because what is un what is seen is temporary. Friends, family, new life. The world isn't coming to end just because a certain president gets elected. Life still goes on. And by the way, when was the last time we started putting our trust in political leaders to save the world? Folks, we serve the Savior of the world. His name is Jesus. So I don't know about you, but I'm going to campaign this year for Jesus as president. How about that? I'll take that as a big round of applause. <laughs> All right. So listen. We fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen, since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. And friends, what we're doing right here, what you're doing right now in your vehicle, has eternal impact. What we're going to do right now is we pray. How many of you believe that prayer, even though you don't see it with your physical eyes, prayer has a spiritual, eternal impact when we engage in it? when we agree together, where two or three are gathered, right in His name, He is there in the midst of us. And He's here today. So we're going to pray. You know what we're going to do? We're going to pray for restoration because the last part of this verse is a promise. He says, God says in Zechariah 9.12, I declare to you that I will restore double to you. So there is restoration that's a promise for us and we're going to pray into that promise right now. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to pray. And I'm going to ask you to pray in a moment, in your vehicle with each other. So we're going to pray first for those suffering from sickness. Does anyone know anyone suffering from any kind of sickness today? So we're going to pray for that. And I want you right now to think about those people that are suffering from any kind of illness in your family, in your network of friends, co-workers, whoever it might be. And as I'm praying this prayer, I want you to name them out loud in your car with the person with people in your car right you just name them out loud right so let's pray lord we thank you for this promise of restoration today and we're going to pray for the sick right now because you told us to actually you didn't tell us to pray for the sick you told us to heal the sick uh and right now our faith we unite our faith with yours jesus what little faith we have and we bring all of these friends and family that are in our network who are sick we bring them to you we name them before you right now go ahead and name them name them i lift up uncle june lord and to joy i lift up Sally. i lift up friends and family right now and we speak right now in jesus name healing to their bodies healing to their minds healing to their soul in Jesus name heal them father from whatever ails them we take authority over sickness in the name of Jesus we stand in the authority of Christ today we take authority over all sickness Lord including COVID-19 including the flu including all those viruses cancer diabetes heart failure heart disease all forms of it in Jesus name we speak healing to them right now and restoration restore them double for Tata, Lord, for Leah, in Jesus' name. Go ahead and just, just whisper a prayer. For some of you, you might want to just say, Lord, have mercy. Lord, send mercy. Healing, grace, and mercy too. 
my friends and family now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now we're going to pray for family relationships. How many of you are getting sick of your kids? Don't honk. How many of you are getting sick of your spouse? Don't honk. Just look at them and say, I love you, honey. Just say, I love you, honey. I choose to love you. How many are getting impatient with the in-laws? All right, so we're going to pray. So let's lean into this right now. Lord, we pray for all our family relationships right now. Lord, there's so, many, so much stress happening right now in the lives of people. Uh, families with young children trying to figure out how to do the school thing, how to educate their kids, Lord, how to be educators, those mothers right now in this, in this space and in our church, Lord, who are, uh, you know, they're just at their wits' end. It's not because they don't love their kids. It's because... They just don't have the energy sometimes. So I pray, Father, right now you refresh them. You restore them. I pray that you would pour out supernatural energy and strength, God. According to Isaiah 40, they would mount up on wings like eagles. They would run and not be weary. They would walk and not faint. They would teach their kids and not keel over at the end of the day. That, Lord, they would, be, they would feel a passion, Lord, for the ministry you've given them, this opportunity to minister to their kids. We pray for marriages, Lord, in our congregation. We pray that you heal, Lord, marriages, God. Heal the communication. Improve it. Father, that husbands and wives would see each other in a different light. They would see each other the way you see them. Husbands would love their wives. Wives would respect their husbands. Father, we ask for it in the name of Jesus because we believe that's what should happen when Christ followers say, I do. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this. In Jesus' name, heal the family all across our congregation and beyond. Lord, we pray now, how many of you know someone or maybe you're in the situation where you are either, uh, you've either lost a job or you're furloughed or you're about to be furloughed or you're about to get laid off because they told you and you know they've seen the writing on the wall at your company or at your workplace and uh, they can't guarantee. Listen, no one can guarantee the future, friends. This is why we trust Jesus. This is why we trust our Heavenly Father who says, don't worry about your life. What you're going to eat, what you're going to drink, what you're going to wear, don't, where you're going to work, don't worry about it. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. So we're going to lean into that promise right now. So if, you, if, you, if that's you, go ahead and let's agree. Lord, we just pray right now for those who are jobless, those who are on the verge of losing jobs. God, you are our heavenly father who provides for our every need. And so, God, we know you're lining up something good. And so we, we release, Lord God, the right job at the right time, at the right pay scale, Lord, for our friends and family right here in our congregation. In Jesus' name, we release those jobs. Thank you for your provision for them right now. Give them peace, we pray. And open the doors that no one can shut and close the doors that no one can open, Lord. Make the pathway clear. And Lord, miraculous provision. God, show them how good you are. Providing for their needs and even beyond what they need. Abundant provision, Lord. We pray for it and we release it now over their lives in Jesus' name. Now, Father, we also pray for our world, our society in general. God, we pray for shalom. We pray for peace. We pray, Father, that you would still the storms that are raging in people's lives, that are, you know, that are be, be, these storms that are just, and, and these, the hatred, the um, indifference, the um, inability to communicate, Lord, and understand. Lord, we just ask that you restore understanding in our world today, that people would start to see each other as human beings and treat each other that way. Human beings made in the image of God. Let the love of Christ shine and begin in your people. Begin in us, Lord. May we be the example and the model for people out there to show them how it's done. Shine through us the love of Jesus, we pray. And we thank you. And we give you praise and honor and glory.
seeing all your cars here and seeing you in your cars, uh, it, it, it brings me a lot of hope. It really does. I've, I've felt hopeful. Aside from having some moments of thinking, how are we going to do this logistically and all that, uh, it all came together. God's behind it. Um, but I don't know. Have, have any of you felt hopeless recently? Just felt scared in the last, any time in the last six months? Um, and I was trying to think recently, like, feeling fear and feeling feeling scared, feeling afraid. What is what is the what is the opposite of that? And uh, I feel so often like we we want to say the opposite of fear is courage. Um, but you can have courage in the midst of fear, but you're still afraid. And I think the 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 opposite is is hope. The opposite of fear is hope. And when we have hope. When we have hope for the future, it really does work to drive that fear away because we know who's in charge. We're afraid about, like, just piggybacking off Pastor Ken a little bit. We're, we're fearful when it comes to work. We're fearful when it comes to family. We're fearful when it comes to a lot of things. And it's normal, but the beautiful thing is we can take hope. And you'll have to forgive Pastor Ken and I if we are a little long-winded. We have been used to preaching in front of an empty room for the last six months, so sorry in advance. Um, <laughs> Anywho, uh, I read this quote, let me find it, uh, from Corey Ten Boom that says, Never be afraid to trust an unknown future to a known God. Man, I just like, you ever see something and you're like, wow. And that was a wow moment for me because there's a lot of things that we don't know about our future. Uh, there's a lot of unknowns when it comes to just life in general, not even just life in a pandemic, but life in general. But we know Jesus. We know God. And if you know God, you don't have to fear. You don't have to be afraid. You don't have to be afraid of the unknowns and whatever comes your way. You know, it, it, makes, it makes me think. You know, there's some people that you want to like, that you want to see or you want to talk to uh, when things aren't going well right and uh for me you know that's my wife my wife is a, is a really good sounding board and she's somebody that helps keep things in perspective but another another person that uh no matter uh, that i've known for the last few years no matter what is happening this person always has a smile on their face and is always full of hope is martha trailer <laughs> she's sitting right here in the subaru and seriously she's on our prayer team um and if you need i'm just gonna sorry sorry for doing this martha you can get mad at me later if you need somebody to pray with you or you need somebody to talk to somebody to help you find some hope in the lord you can talk to martha and i'm sure she would give you her number and would love to talk to you because she's a very she's a people person and this has been hard for her um but uh, you you look through the psalms and you see the psalmist say things like uh, my hope is in the lord i will not lose hope that why are you downcast oh my soul i will remember you and praise you yet again like they are so filled with hope but they are listing all the reasons that they have to to be scared to be afraid that they're remembering they're ending it with but i know who my god is and so i just want to i just want to pray real quick for god's covering over you and i'm going to read a little bit more of psalm 34 which i shared with you at the beginning and in verse 4, it says, I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. This poor man called and the Lord heard him. He saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and he delivers them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. Have you been tasting and seeing that the Lord is good. It's been, I think what this has pointed out to us is it's, it's really easy to associate your Christianity with a couple hours on a Sunday morning. And what do we do when we can't go, right? Are we still allowing the word of the Lord to be in our hearts? Are we still hoping in him? Are we still trusting in him? Let me pray. Father, we just... We ask for your covering over your people. Lord, for those of us who have lost loved ones, God, we pray peace. We pray, we pray strength over them. God, for those of us who have kids that are going away to college, God, we pray that you would help us to not be fearful about the unknown, knowing that you hold them in your hands. Lord, and you love our children and our families more than we ever could. 
Lord, we pray a protection over them as they uh, go back to school. If their kids are going away to college and they're going to be on campus, Lord, protect them. Be with them. God, be with uh, the moms and the dads that are at home trying to do school Monday through Friday while trying to work as well. Lord, give them an extra measure of grace. God, help them to uh, have some hope for the future. God, for those who are going without right now, Lord, I pray that you would send your resources through the means of your people, the church, God, to help those who are in need. God, for those who are dealing with sickness, Lord, we pray for relief. We pray for healing in Jesus' name. Supernatural healing in Jesus' name. God, for those who are dealing with uh, mental health issues right now, for those who might be struggling with depression or anxiety, God, we pray that you would bring an end to that in Jesus' name. Make a way for them to get the help that they need. Father, for relationships, I know Pastor Ken talked about it, but for those who, who might be struggling with their marriage, Father, that they would reach out for help. God, that you would send help in that way. We pray for your covering over every issue, over every circumstance. And more than anything else, Lord, we pray for your presence to be with us, that we would recognize you with us. We would invite you into our homes, into our workplace, into our cars, wherever we are, Lord, that we would make way for you to be with us and we would take hope in the fact that we know the end of the story. We know that you will be victorious in all things, Lord. And so we take hope in that. We take solace in that. And we will praise you in the storms. We will praise you in the valleys. We will praise you on the mountaintops and everywhere in between. Father, that we would just be happy to be wherever you are. And if you are with us in a storm, then we are happy to be with you in that storm. Help us to change our perspective, to see the larger picture that you are a God who is in ultimate control. So we continue to thank you and praise you. And we pray that your will would be done in all things. In Jesus' name.
Thank you. 
Yes, 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 yes. Hey, let's give him a big, let's give him a big round of applause and last hug of the night. That's right. Gotta let the world know. Gotta let the neighborhood know. too much. I think you're loving your car horn a little too much tonight, but hey, you know what? We gotta adjust, and this is all part of it, isn't it? So listen, we're at the, the end of our time today, tonight. It's been wonderful. We didn't know if this was gonna work, so we want to thank all of you for just coming out and uh, engaging and participating. It's really great to see all of you. Um, I know that uh, many of you are wondering when is all this gonna be uh, you know, all the restrictions are going to be lifted and, you know, we're, we're going to try to stay in touch with you and keep you um, updated on, uh, you know, the, all the new events and the things that we're going to try to do to gather people. Um, if you like this, please let us know. And I, I know hopefully we can do more and more of this in the future, um, at least until they, uh, they lift the restrictions. Regardless, tonight... Before we leave, I just want to read you a passage of scripture, and this is my prayer and our prayer for us tonight as we go. Come from Psalm 91. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Here's the promise. Surely He will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly plague. He will cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you say, the Lord is my refuge, and if you make the most high your dwelling, no harm will overtake you, no disaster will come near your tent, because he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. And listen, I want you to take that promise tonight as we go. I want to just pray a blessing on you. Let's pray, Lord, I just thank you for uh, gathering us tonight in this way. We thank you, Lord, that you've uh, allowed us to worship together. I pray that as uh, people go tonight, that, Lord, your presence would be felt in some very special ways that would draw us to each other, to you. We thank you for the promise of Psalm 91, and we receive all of your provision, all of your protection, and all of your direction and guidance for our lives. We thank you, and we pray it in the name of the Father, Son, and Spirit, in the name of the, our all-powerful Savior and Lord Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen.